Good morning and welcome to Trans West Truck Trailer RV. Happy New Year. Uh, my name is Katie O'Neill. I'm very excited to show you our first video of a 2024 superstar of the calendar year 2024. Um, I'm joining you here from Trans West Truck Trailer RV and I have a ton of information from you, for you. I just came back from a three week trip to San Diego in my 4065 Superstar and I can't wait to tell you all about it. Um, as usual, I like to start my videos from the inside out, so Jody, please go ahead and take her on back. Uh, today we are looking at a 2024 Superstar. So this is an all new M2 106 Plus chassis, 360 horsepower and 1,150 foot pounds of torque, a 20,000 pound towing capacity, a 100 gallon fuel capacity, and this is the beautiful Cigaro decor, uh, along with a special order exterior color that we came up with, taking out some of the extra paint and giving you a more uh, sophisticated look on the exterior. Uh, this is a glacier glazed maple hardwood matte finish interior as well, and I just love the way that this has turned out. So um, some of the things I want to cover today are things that I learned on my trip in my 4065. So we're going to talk about, first and foremost, this washing machine. How much water does it take, right? So we have in this coach a 150-gallon freshwater tank, a 60-gallon gray water tank, and a 40-gallon black water tank. Um, this is an all-electric coach. It's running on hydronic heat or it's running on any of the two uh, 15,000 BTU air conditioners with uh, also uh, the overhead heat. So when we're running a coach like this in this kind of weather, it's negative two right now, we are using our hydronic heat. It's really interesting. I'm trying to get a video prepped for an RV tomorrow because it did not have the heat strips on and it was not uh, running the hydronic heat. The, the lines are frozen. I can't even start the coach. Whereas with this coach, I was able to put an additive into the fuel and then keep the coach on with hydronic heat, keep those bays heated, and it was ready to rock and roll for a video first thing this morning. So these coaches are all weather as long as they've been prepped appropriately. Uh, but one of the things I wanted to cover is when we were out on our camping trip, we did three different campsites and the experience gave me an opportunity to really measure tanks for you to show you how much water I would use. So this uh, Splendid washer and dryer unit, first and foremost, did a fantastic job. We had no issues drying towels, drying heavier things like sweatshirts. Um, we also, of course, use it for bike kits fr quite frequently. Uh, my boyfriend's a big cyclist. Um, but I was able to run uh, three loads of laundry for a total of 60% gray water capacity. So 20% of your gray water tank is going to be used during a wash cycle, which means if you wanted to do your laundry, uh, four loads of it in between uh, your, leaving, your, your leaving point and your destination. So if you had you know, a six or eight hour drive, uh, these loads take about an hour and 25 minutes uh, to wash. The dry time is about the same. Uh, you would be able to do four loads of laundry uh, on a regular drive in this coach and then you could dump your gray water tank when you got to your destination before you go into your boondocking situation. Now, of course, if you're plugged into city water and you have a sewer and you have 50 amp, uh, or in my case, I had one site with 50 amp and one side with 30 amp, uh, either of those two sites would have been fine to do your laundry um, without having to worry about that tank capacity because of course at um, those sites you would be just dropping your gray water tank directly into the sewer. Um, so all of that being said, really good information for you. About 20% of your tank on that 60 gallon gray water capacity uh, per load of laundry with this unit. And um, one thing to make note of is we do keep our linens down here below, but I use the Tide Pods and I just put a, a little Ziploc bag full of them in here along with some dryer sheets. They work really well. Um, you just have to make sure that the right grade uh, for your unit. Another thing worth mentioning is these drawers came in super handy for bathing suits, for socks, uh, tank tops, uh, bike kit kits, all of the things that you might want to use. Um, these are really good drawers, uh, especially keeping those smaller amounts of things that you have. And then uh, we had three people with us on the trip. We had my son and myself and my boyfriend. And the way that we s split that up is this half of the closet was mine. So as you can see, plenty of hanging space in here, nice overhead light. And then this other half of the closet was Jason's. Uh, so, you know, plenty of room here. We have the safe 
we were able to keep uh, any valuables we have, you know, diamond rings, things like that. When you're vacationing, of course, if you leave your coach and someone gets into it, it's nice to know that everything's locked up. This is mounted into the subframe of the coach. So this is actually mounted into the aluminum subframe of the coach. It's welded in there so they can't just pull it out. It's a very good place to keep things safe. Uh, so in this bottom area here though, one of the things I'll tell you is that we found it very convenient to have shoe boxes. So we had a number of those plastic shoe boxes and it wasn't all the same size. We had some that were larger for hiking boots. Uh, we had some that were smaller for flats or sandals or flip flops. And we had two layers of uh, shoe boxes the whole way through. That way we could hang our clothes above. And then whenever we needed to pull a, a pair of shoes out, cause you're not gonna wear, you know, I, I brought cowboy boots to go see Zach Bryan. Um, I didn't wear my cowboy boots except for that one portion of the trip. So I was able to put those back in the box, store them down below. And it keeps a nice flat surface in the coach. And it's a lot more convenient to, to store all of your shoes in those shoe boxes. So I would certainly recommend that in the future. Um, another thing that we found really convenient is we were able to keep all of our extra pillows and such up here uh, for storage and we used the bunk for um, transporting goods until my son flew out to join us. Um, but you can all, really fit a lot of your uh, bigger, bulkier blankets and pillows in this compartment. That way when you don't have people with you, uh, if you have someone that, someone that joins you, you'll still have everything that you need for those beds. Um, now here above this storage area here, I would highly recommend using this area for things that you aren't going to need to access as frequently, maybe backup batteries, uh, things along that line. You know, we have uh, things I would include on a trip that we found handy. You need twine, you need a screwdriver, you need, uh, you know, those types of like little things that you want to keep, but you're just not going to have very often, you keep those up here. That way you don't have to access them so frequently. Now there are two 110 outlets up there and there are grommets that come down below here. Uh, so you can run a cord if you wanted to keep something plugged in to uh, like a laptop or your iPad or whatever, you could do that, or even a CPAP machine. But for the most part, we kept those things plugged in right here. So here you've got two USB ports and then a 110 outlet. And then here we've got storage. This is where I would keep, you know, I still have in there. I have a water bottle in there. I have a book that I was reading. I have a flashlight. And then whenever I'm not using my cord and we're in transit, I just puff, pop that in there. I leave it plugged in, close this and go down the road. So great, great feature there. Um, the mattress is really comfortable. So for those of you that are wondering whether or not you need to replace your mattress, I have to tell you, I got some of the highest sleep scores I've ever had on this trip, of course, we were at sea level uh, here in Colorado. We're at 5,280 feet above sea level, so the air is a little thinner. Uh, so that might have something to do with it, but really on that whole trip, great sleep scores, a really, really comfortable bed. And I wanna show you underneath here, uh, this is where we were able to keep all of our, um, this is where we were able to keep all of our uh, like pipe attachments for our vacuum line. We were able to keep our, uh, our broom here, our mop in here. Uh, we also have some pretty large totes where we have room for extra stuff. Those totes really remained empty on this trip even though we were gone for such a long time. And honestly, my coach left uh, Colorado at the end of November and it's currently in Arizona. So she has not been home for months at this point in time. I was only able to go out there for a few weeks. Of course, I missed my first two videos of the year. So this is a makeup video today. I'll do another makeup video for you tomorrow. So I've got three videos this week, so I don't miss anything in January, um, but super, super good to know. Um, another nice feature here, we're gonna show you, this is the extension for the table. These are 11 inches. So you'll have 22 inches of extension uh, for your table. Uh, this coach has recliners, so it does not come with a complimentary, um, or not, I shouldn't say complimentary, the uh, op option to order ottomans. Um, we actually use our ottomans for dinner quite frequently. So I will measure this for you, uh, just so you can see how high it is off the ground and the width that you have here for sitting. Uh, but these chairs are really nice. We used our ottomans at the dining table and I'll show you that in a few minutes. I'm just gonna put it up here and out of the way for right now. Okay, so while we have this bed up, you'll see that there's a ton of storage space over here on the left and right hand side of the bed. Things to note about this. This is a really good place if you have a CPAP machine to keep things there, but you can also get those longer 
um, storage containers and keep extra goods in that area as well. So that's a nice place to know about. Um, this was a very, very comfortable trip for us. Now in 2024, we have done a complete overhaul of the interior of this coach. So the Ventana is the class A version of the Superstar. The Superstar and the Ventana both had an interior facelift. So you'll note that we have this really beautiful banding um, on these pillars that you have adorning either side of the bed. We also have a new uh, backboard or headrest, if you will. And then above us still, we use these control panels all of the time. So it was interesting. So whenever it was bedtime, you know, you just push the all lights off uh, button and all the lights go off in the coach. So even when my son was with us, if he went to bed and we all went to bed, we'd push that button when it was time to go down for the night. All the lights are off instantaneously. I do not have the system that you can control on your phone. Uh, my coach is a 2022. So in 2023, we added an integrated control panel that has cell phone access. I'll tell you, there's some benefits to this system that are really ex um, very convenient. It was something I certainly wished I had had on the trip. Um, one of the things that's super nice is you can monitor your tanks, you can monitor your lights, uh, you can take, you can monitor your interior, exterior heat, all of those things. Well, I'm sorry, not exterior, uh, bay heat, <laughs> not exterior heat. If I could turn up outside right now, I would definitely bring it to a balmy 14 or something because negative two is really cold. Uh, but no, so you can monitor your uh, your bay temperature as well as your coach temperature from your phone. So if you're laying in bed at night and you want to see what your battery voltage is and whether or not you need to start your generator, you can do all of that just from the phone itself without having to get out of bed. Now, why would you not want to get out of bed? Because your toes might get cold. So very frequently, I found myself in a position where I've always said, I don't need heated floors. I mean, I'm going to be camping in San Diego. It'll be warm. I got to tell you, it was chilly in the morning in that coach. And this coach has new for 2024, the available option of heated floors. So not only are these porcelain tile floors absolutely drop dead gorgeous, um, they are also heated. So this is the rear zone of the coach. Then you've got the mid zone and then you've got the front zone. So these are heated floors for 2024. Pretty nice feature there. Um, this area here is priceless. I can't tell you I have a little jewelry rack I hang. I actually hang my earrings in mine. I have a more tufted uh, board here. You could not use this to hang earrings in, uh, in this coach. It would ruin this material, but it's a really beautiful looking material. And this is a great place for you to keep all of your accessories. There's some plugs here so you can charge your devices. And then these drawers are really, really handy. I was able to keep a ton of clothes uh, in this coach. In fact, I had to move a bunch of stuff around when I was coming back from San Diego because my luggage was too heavy because I was bringing things home. So really, really great capacity. Uh, everybody gets two in our household. So when CJ came out, he got two drawers. Jason got two drawers. I had two drawers. Um, up here, we have our uh, plugins for HDMI. Honestly, we watched very little television on the trip, but when we did, we would just download um, for, through our cradle point system uh, things onto our 4K smart TV and watch them um, off of Netflix or off of Hulu uh, or Peacock, whatever it is that you're subscribing to. Uh, we don't have a Blu-ray player in our coach any longer, um, but if you wanted to have one installed, it's already pre-wired for you. Uh, these compartments up top again, are just great for going down the road. If you've got anything that you're storing here on your shelves that you take out when you get to your destination, for instance, for me, like all of my jewelry, my bracelets, my necklaces, all those things go back in a little box. Again, these plastic containers up top, and then we close them up and we're ready to pull in. I mean, really, to be honest with you, the longest distance that we had uh, in terms of get ready from one campsite to the next was the driving aspect of it. Bringing the coach in, pulling up our leveling jacks and bringing in our slides and hitting the road really took very little time at all. Um, now you'll note I'm standing on a carpeted per, uh, portion of the bedroom. This is a really large area. This comes because this entire full wall slide comes out, including your bunks and then also the kitchen area. And then you also have a full slide for your bedroom area. So this is super, super handy. Um, this bedroom is really plenty of room for someone to get up and get dressed comfortably in the RV industry. If you're looking at super C's, this area here, if you would like to have privacy while you're getting ready in the morning is priceless. I can attest to the fact that when my son was in the center area, 
getting ready to go, I could come in here into this back bedroom area and have plenty of room to get ready, even with company in the coach. Um, so if you'll note, we have our MCD uh, power shades. I'm not sorry, MCD manual shades in this coach. Uh, you get power at the Supreme Air level. They're manual at the Superstar level. But these blackout shades are so good that I could not tell what time of day it was when I woke up in the morning. Uh, so it's really nice if you want to be able to sleep in and get caught up on your rest on your vacation. You could absolutely do it in this coach. And then I used this window way more than I expected I would. Uh, this is such a nice window. If you've got those two open on either side of the bed and then this will open, you really have some great circulation in the cabin of this coach. So highly recommend that you make use of that window. It's something I hadn't really paid attention to in the past and I found on my trip, I use it every single day. So that was a great um, great trip. We do a lot of trips that are short. Uh, this was the first time that we spent weeks in the coach. It was also the first time that we tried a 30 amp service, zero service, and then a 50 amp service to see what the differentiation was. Uh, so Jody, I'm going to go ahead and pull this slide on in. So as you can see, as this slide comes in, uh, this bedroom space is still accessible. So if you are loading your coach and you only have one side to pull out, I would say the most useful side uh, to pull out would be the full wall slide. Um, and then you can go ahead and pull in your full wall slide when you're done packing up and hit the road. But if you only have uh, one side because you're doing a sidewalk load and you're in your neighborhood, certainly it would benefit you to uh, do the full wall slide to, pa to pack up. And there's a few different reasons here. Uh, one of the reasons is your accessibility to your washer and dryer when you pull this uh, full wall slide in is gonna be limited. So you're not gonna be able to open these doors when you have this slide in. I'm gonna close this real quick just so we can make sure, don't forget to do it later. Uh, there's a little latch up top. You wanna make sure you close that. If you don't, the first turn you take going down the road, you'll remember that you didn't do that. Um, okay, so this is that panel I was talking about. So this 10 inch panel is all new for 2023 and of course carried into 2024. This is how you sync it. Uh, this is your connected solutions app. That's what it looks like. That's what you're looking for. You just pair it right here. It gives you access to be able to set up your auto start for your generator. It tells you what your house and chassis charges. It tells you um, what kind of demand you're using for your HVAC or your house batteries. Uh, you can also um, set your quiet hours. And then you've got your floor heat control here next for the front and the rear. Uh, you've got your HVAC control. So as you can see, we've got everything turned off right now. Um, but if you wanted to turn on your mode, you could do auto, heat pumps. That was the word I was looking for earlier. For, for those of you who didn't notice when I said 15,000 BTU air conditioners with the overhead things, that would be the heat pump. <laughs> uh, the other thing that you can use though is your furnace. So your furnace is gonna run off of a few different things. Uh, this is an important aspect to talk about. So this coach, as we mentioned earlier, is an all electric coach. What that means for you when you're camping is this. You have AC1, which is a single burner or a single filament that's heating your uh, Oasis tank. It's heating hydraulic fluid in a tank and getting that hot. Then you have a second filament, which is AC2. So you can have AC1 or AC2. AC2 is running both of those, helping you through 50 amp, 30 amp or battery power to heat your Oasis fluid. Uh, if you want to use your burner system, the water or the, the fluid in that tank gets so hot that I actually have to turn the water temperature down. So it would be my recommendation that if you are camping and you want hot water for your shower, that you would turn on not only AC1 and AC2, even if you're plugged into 50 amp, but you would use that burner to get that water really up to a nice hot temperature. And then you can actually control the temperature of that water as you are showering. You can turn it down. I mean, literally I couldn't turn it up all the way. It was so warm, uh, which is a great problem to have, of course, in an RV. Um, all of that being said, if you're not plugged into 50 amp or 30 amp, you can just use that burner system. It uses about a half gallon per hour if you're using it for heat and water. So very, very little consumption considering you have a 100 gallon fuel tank. But keep in mind, your generator will not start over 25% of your fuel is being used in your coach. So whenever you get to your campground, before you get into an area where you're gonna park for an extended period of time, I would encourage you to fill up 
that 100 gallon uh, tank of yours of, with diesel so that you don't have to worry about running out of diesel fuel to run your generator. Uh, when you're not plugged in, it's important to understand, I did a few different things. I tried blow drying my hair before mass on Sunday. It was at nine o'clock, it was before generator hours at the park were on. And when I ran my hair dryer, I got about three quarters of the way through and I had depleted the battery storage that I had in my coach. So I needed to actually uh, start my generator. I had a bunch of fault codes I had set off. My boyfriend was like, what the heck? Um, another instance that we used uh, the coach with only, um, with only battery power and solar without running our generator, we microwaved my son's leftovers. We zapped a really good portion of that battery pretty quick. Now he was able to fully microwave his dish. I wasn't fully able to dry my hair, uh, but those things do take a lot of draw uh, from your battery. So you wanna make sure if you're not gonna be able to plug into 50 or 30 amp, uh, both of those situations, 30 amp was fine for running the microwave, fine for running the washer and dryer, and also fine for blow drying my hair. Uh, it would not allow you to run two air conditioners, but it would be fine for doing all of those other things. If you're not plugged into 30 amp or 50 amp though, it's important to understand if you've got generator hours, because you're in, for instance, a state park like we were, you may want to wait until after you can start your generator to do those things that are going to cost you a little bit more power. The other thing that we found interesting is that if we topped off um, and ran our generator between seven and eight o'clock at night. When we woke up in the morning, solar was already kicking. It was already getting our batteries fully charged. So that's a really good convenience uh, to have. I've got 525 um, amps on or watts on my, uh, my roof. We have uh, 200 watt panels now. So if you wanna have three of those installed, you'd have 600. We can go up to 800, um, but I did feel like the 500 was more than enough to keep us fully charged. Um, okay, so back to this little bad boy, floor heat HVAC, Bluetooth pair, and then lights. This is such a convenient feature. So if I do, for instance, in the master bedroom, all lights off, I can turn everything off or I can turn all lights on. Now, when I do that, I can also go into my bedroom and I can turn on just my, uh, just my uh, overhead lights or ceiling lights. Let's see, what do we wanna do? Overhead dresser lights, hall lights, ceiling lights, so I can have a lower level of light in my coach. This was a really big convenience when we were out uh, camping. It was really nice not to have it be so, you know, overwhelmingly bright when we would come back from dinner or whatever it was at night if we were just hanging out. So it's really nice to be able to customize what you're doing. And again, this is not only just here on this panel, it's also on all of your KIB switches uh, throughout the coach. I'll just show you what a KIB switch looks like right here. Uh, so these KIB switches that are throughout the coach, uh, you can use these as well. And then keep in mind, you can also turn them all the way off. So you've got your backlighting, you can turn that off, but you can access your lights from your, uh, from your KIB switches, from your phone, and then also from this panel. So when coming into the coach at night, you could go through and just turn on only the lights that you wanted to turn on, which is a nice feature. Now behind us, we have our bunk. Um, this was a great area. My son used the top bunk. That was where he liked to be. He is about 5'11", he's 19, um, he's not a huge guy. Uh, and this is a 72 by 30 inch area, very comfortable for him. Uh, he did a lot of stuff where he kept everything over here, uh, plugged in like his cell phone and um, you know, he had his, uh, you know, the book that he was reading, his AirPods, all of those things were over here. And then the funny thing is, is that he was using this area up here as well for things. So he had all sorts of stuff stuck up here, you know, his wallet, his keys. So I thought that that was kind of an interesting execution of use. And then uh, we also had him using for his socks, underwears and t-shirts and such, these drawers here. Uh, so Jason and I took the drawers that are under the closet in the back, but he had more than enough room. I don't even know that he used the full uh, drawer uh, uh, the second drawer when we were camping. And like I said, we were there for quite some time, did a lot of surfing, a lot of bike riding. Um, but if you do have kids, it's really nice that you have so much storage space. And then this was his closet and we actually made full use of it. Uh, this bar is about 10 inches wide, plenty of room for your coats. Uh, he had his wetsuit with him. And then he also had all of these little cubbies down here. And again, um, we have like all of our flashlights and uh, like fire, uh, fire starting kits and all that stuff. In this, in this bottom drawer, uh, he didn't use, I think he might've used just the top drawer, uh, but he didn't use the bottom two drawers. 
Uh, so it's a lot of extra room. So if you are planning on camping, I can say very um, definitively that this is a very useful coach for a family. I think you could very easily have four people in this RV with enough storage. Um, and then the pantry space, uh, we found to be very useful as well. And we do have uh, those XOXO plastic containers. Um, I would highly recommend pouring your cereal into one of those containers as opposed to trying to carry the box. You know, uh, we took all of our power bars out and put them in a container as opposed to having the box. So when you use your pre-sized uh, containers that you've figured out by Tetris, you know, what fits in these areas, it's a little more useful than if you're just trying to put random sized boxes in this, in this cabinet here. Um, as I mentioned earlier, we used the microwave and convection oven a ton. Uh, we used it both as a microwave and we used it as a convection oven. So for both purposes, it worked very well. Um, we, we cooked a lot of, a lot of meals in our coach. We tried not to spend so much money. We were out in California, um, trying to really kind of get that great, you know, beach experience, lots of surfing, lots of bike riding, but really not trying to spend too much money on high end meals. We went out two or three times. Um, but for the most part, we cooked at the coach and this worked great for us. Um, we also have, uh, I don't use these cutting boards. We store our cutting boards in here on top of actually the silverware tray, but plenty of room for everything here. Oh, and there are some, this is a custom exterior paint color. So these are the touch up colors that you need for the exterior of the coach. That's good. And then, uh, we use our refrigerator, our, our, our dishwasher quite a bit. Now this is kind of an interesting thing. So I've historically always used the dishwasher as a drying rack, but on this trip where we were boondocking, you have to have the generator running to be able to power on the dishwasher. So if your dishes are in there, unless you turn the generator on, you're not opening the dishwasher. You'll break the lock if you pull it open. So I thought that that was kind of interesting. But another thing I found really interesting was I was measuring, it takes about 5% of your gray water tank to do dishes in the sink. Now, if you use a collapsible silicone bucket and you dump it out and you don't let it go down the drain, you can prevent using some of that water. But if you're using, you know, we use Meyer soap because it's biodegradable, so it wouldn't hurt anything if we dumped it out. Um, so we were able to save some of that water usage, get it down to like two and a half, three percent if we were using soapy water and then just rinsing. Um, but this dishwasher only used 5% of our gray water tank and I could do a lot more dishes in the dishwasher than I could by hand washing in the sink. So if you're trying to minimize the amount of gray water you're using, believe it or not, using this dishwasher, filling it up completely with all of your plates and all of your dishes and not using the sink is actually the more efficient way to wash your dishes. Who would have thought? So really cool information on that level. Um, these drawers are fantastic. You know, I don't know. You got one that has bottle openers and cheese slicers. You got one for spatulas. You got one, you know, for, you know, your, those little tongs that you use. Um, but just plenty of room uh, there for sure. Of course, we need to have the scrubby brush holder because we did do a lot of dishes in the sink. Um, little trash can here. Uh, this one goes into my, uh, bathroom. I put it right here. Show you. And then we took another one that we bought at Home Depot and cut the top of it off so it would fit under there to maximize space. So we use that little one right there. That one goes in inside of the other one that we cut uh, the top off of. And you can fit a much bigger trash can in there than what they, pr they provide to you. This looks nice under the sink, but it's not very functional. It's pretty small, but it's great for the bathroom. Uh, so this is a great cubby area. First aid kits, you know, Claritin, you know, NyQuil, all that stuff that you would normally keep in a medicine cabinet, as well as my hair dryer, um, you know, and, and one of those magnifying mirrors that lights up, all of those things, plenty of room in here. And then what I do use though, and I'll tell you, I think it's really a good idea, is I have uh, long plastic trays that I put against these back walls that hold all of our facial cleansers, our shampoos and things like that while we're in transit so they're not tipping over or flopping around in this area. But also being that we live here in Colorado, uh, where it's cold and things freeze, if anything explodes out of the top of those things, it drips down into that plastic container. So I'm not having to clean this area out. Uh, this is where we would keep all of our uh, hand towels um, and, you know, face towels for the uh, coach. So this is a great place in the bathroom just to keep, and we kept the ones for the kitchen in here as well. 
Uh, up here, of course, we didn't actually really have any issues with any of our breakers. Um, we had a very, very event-free uh, camping trip, which is, of course, great. Um, now, let's talk about this Dometic here. So, one thing to talk about here is I do like, so mine, you can't actually see the buttons here. You can see where it's fill and flush. So let's talk about how to use, first of all, you've got this great porcelain toilet, right? It's not a pump toilet. It's nice and steady. It's got plenty of what I call knee room. So it's very comfortable to sit on. Uh, you got, we keep all of our, you know, feminine products, toilet paper, uh, the, the fluid that you would use to treat your, your black water tank in there. And then I have like a little, you know, divider tray that I keep in here with my decorative plant that goes out every time we stop somewhere. It goes back in the drawer when we're done. Um, so plenty of room in here for everybody to keep uh, their toothbrushes and all that stuff. Um, and then we keep all of our cleaning supplies for the entire coach underneath this compartment. Toilet paper dispenser here. We used the Dickens out of the sweet plates. Um, so we would pick up all the carpets because we had a carpet in here, carpet over there, carpet under the sink runner in front of the uh the dinette area we would take those outside to shake them out and then i would sweep the entire coach and it was such a easier process to sweep into this kit plate than to sweep sweep out the door um we use the heck out of this this is great we were in a very sandy environment i love 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 this sweep plate um so i can't speak highly enough of this if you don't have central vacuum in your coach and you don't think it's important, I'm just going to tell you right now, it makes everything way easier. And then we would take our vacuum hose and come through every few days and just hit the carpeted areas just to make sure that we didn't have any sand or debris built up. But this is a very, very useful system. Um, the other thing that I found that I used a ton, way more than I expected. So I was constantly, um, during my showers, sitting down here with this thing and I would seriously like lower it down, have the water on me, sit down, relax, take a shower. It, for some reason, I sat down in the shower way more than I expected I ever would. Um, and so having this adjustable shower head, I use this almost exclusively. Uh, so that's super nice. Of course, you keep your shampoo and your conditioner up here. Um, and then we'll talk about this. So I wanna talk about plumbing issues. So one of the things that I did is I turned my recycle on when I was plugged into city water. And I know you're not supposed to do that because what happens is it's running behind the scenes and it's heating up your water. So you turn on the Oasis, turn on your heat pump, right? The, that's the one that you wanna turn on uh, so that you're getting that, that, uh, that water hot. And then you turn this on when you're boondocking and what it does is it takes that uh, fresh water out of the tank, circulates through, brings it back into the tank and it gets it hot, so that whole tank of water heats. Now that's gonna be good for keeping the coach warm if it's really cold at night. It's also gonna be good for keeping your, getting your water hot. If you do this and you're plugged into city water, it will leak into the bay that's down below this bathroom, and you will see water pooling in the liner above your storage bay, and it's because you are literally putting, the water's coming out, and it's coming in from the city, and it doesn't have anywhere to go, so it overflows. So I actually created a subfloor leak into my coach. I can't tell you how many people I can assume have done this because they didn't think of the consequences. Do not use this Aquaview Aquamizer system on recycle unless you are not plugged into city water. If you are using your holding tanks, no big deal. If you are plugged into city water, don't use this feature. Just let it run through to the sewer and dump everything out. If you are not having a sewer connection and you're plugged into city water and you only have water but no sewer, then before you start to use this system, make sure you turn off your fresh tank fill from city so that you don't have to worry about that overflowing and flooding your bay down below. Um, big deal there. The other thing I wanted to talk about with this toilet is um, before you use your toilet, fill this water level up. I'm not gonna fill it up now because this coach is winterized, but fill this water up uh, to a, for uh, to a little bit and then flush it a few times and then put your treatment in there. If you're using a pod, you have to let it dissolve completely before you flush it. If you're that plastic that those pods come in will ruin the macerator that is in this toilet. This is not a FlowJet system or a SantaCon system. We can install that for you, but it still has a macerator at the inception into the tank. Um, but you want to make sure you're putting water into your tank before you actually start using the toilet. The other thing that I thought was kind of interesting 
I don't honestly pay a lot of attention to tank levels because I don't have to deal with it. But on this trip, I wanted to get myself more familiar with it. If I have 100% of fresh water, I've got 150 gallon capacity, 60 and then 40, right? Well, what I wanna do if I am in a situation where I wanna dump my black tank, I'll let my black tank fill. Of course, it's not open. I don't, I don't leave it open to the sewer. The reason I don't leave it open to the sewer is because we don't wanna develop what's called a poop pyramid where you have poop that's like kind of piling up down below because there's nothing to catch the sewage. So you keep your black tank closed. And as it gets filled up, it will actually give you an alert. It'll turn a little yellow light on and tell you that it's getting close to being full. At that point in time, we would use our gray tank, do a few loads of laundry. And then when we had our gray tank filled up to about 60 to 80%, we would go ahead, flush our black tank, and then use our gray tank to flush the line of the black tank. So leave this closed all the time. Close this little guy when you're about to dump your black tank so that it gets filled up and then dump your black tank first and then your gray tank second. Um, if you have questions about this, shoot me a text, call me, email me, text me. Let me know how I can help you. I'm trying really hard to get better this year. Um, I think I've done a great job for you historically. I hope that you enjoy RVs Inside Out as a, as a video channel, but I really wanna help you get to that next level where when you go camping, you know how to use your coach. And so I thought that was really, really useful information. Um, and it's a technique, right? It's You could do it any other way you want, but that technique was really interesting because you could see the black water dump happening, so you knew what was coming out of there. But when you dumped that gray tank afterwards, you could see how much stuff that was in that line was actually being pushed out by that gray water tank. So that's a really, really nice way to be able to flush your tank without having to do that black water tank flush. You still flush, you still clean your black water tank, don't get me wrong, but that gray water can be really useful because it's a whole lot, it's 60 gallons, coming in full force, dumping all of that sewage and cleaning that line out for you so you don't have residual stuff stuck in your, uh, in your uh, gravity hose. So sorry to get into the details of the yuckiness, but hey, that's super cool. Um, okay, so we've covered a lot of the shower area. I don't know if I pointed out this fantastic new backsplash that we have for 24 um, or that new beautiful vessel sink. It looks absolutely stunning. This is a very, very first class coach. Uh, these doors are super heavy duty. These of course are solid maple doors. Um, the upgrade that they've done for this coach in terms of the overall finish is really fantastic. Um, I'll tell you right now, when you close these doors, it's nice and quiet in the bedroom. It's nice and quiet in the bathroom. The person who's sleeping can stay asleep. And then this door here, of course, allows you to stay up late at night. If you've got the kids sleeping and you wanna play, you know, game of bridge or some poker, rummy, whatever it is that you play, you can do that while the kiddos are catching some shut eye. Uh, okay, so we've covered, ah, the induction cooktop. This is another important feature. Man, we seared the best ahi uh, steaks ever. Um, on our true induction cooktop. We did not cook our fish inside. We did take it outside. We used this cooktop practically every day and almost every time if we were making bacon or anything that had like a strong odor, it was outside where we're cooking on our picnic table. So I love the removable uh, aspect of this true induction cooktop. That's a big differentiation uh, between the Numar and the Renegade. Uh, another big differentiation between Numar and Renegade is going to be their operating system. So when you have your uh, wireless control for your for your phone on the Renegade system with Firefly, you do have a lot more information on that unit, especially when it comes to putting out your awnings and your slides. Numar gives you a remote for your awnings. They give you a lot of touch points, both on the outside and the interior of the coach, that you can just push a button so you don't actually have to have the remote to deploy the slides. Uh, so it's not a huge inconvenience. But slide control is one of those things that's really interesting. Numar is diametrically opposed to having slide control be on your uh, phone. They don't want you to do it. They're not interested. Um, we never use this still. I know people do, but I just I don't use it. It's it's cool. I mean, you put chips and dip on it for sure. I don't know why we just never we never take it out. Um, but so with, there's a few things to talk about with that. So if your slide control is tied into this like brain thing of your coach and you use it on your phone or you use it on the app, if your Firefly system goes down, you can't bring your slides in. Numar is very, very fussy about it. They want you to have a button, but it's not tied into that system. So if you wanna bring your slides in, you're doing it here, 
with these hard buttons. So benefit, if your Firefly system is out, you can't bring your slides in on your Renegade, and Numar, you'd still be able to bring your slides in and get on the road. So that's something worth talking about. Disadvantage, I think it's handy to be able to put your slides out with your phone outside of the coach. So there's pros and cons to everything, right? Um, if we could just build the ideal coach, right? <laughs> um, all right, so uh, one thing that we use a ton of is our leveling jack system. HWH provides our leveling jack. They also provide our stairs. Um, we have a much better stair system than anybody else. We have a doorbell uh, on our coach. So when we put our number code in, like you would on a Verona LE or like on the Explorer that I did yesterday, super nice to be able to lock and unlock your doors with a key code. But the doorbell is very handy. We use the doorbell quite frequently, honestly. Um, we had people that would come by and ring the doorbell. And I had a lot of people that wanted to come in and take a look at our superstar. Uh, I would say we definitely had the cat's meow when it came to coaches in all of the parks that we stayed at. There was a lot of Bay Stars, a lot of um, Bounders, a lot of Vistas, you know, a lot of those older gassy gasser coaches. Um, we saw, I think the Discovery was probably the second nicest coach to ours. But everyone who came by was like, oh, man, you have a Numar? And I got to tell you, that's how I feel about it. I'm like, oh, man, I got a Numar. All right, so um, HWH hydraulic leveling system is great. Um, this power system is pretty important. This is telling you what you've got coming in, what's using what, uh, what's on, what's off. So you will still use this. This, of course, is your inverter. Um, this is going to be the Razor antenna. Uh, we didn't use it at all, honestly. We just didn't watch a lot of TV. Your Gerard awnings, you can open and close those right here. This, of course, is a dual awning coach. We are not going outside today. It's negative two. If you would like to watch a video on this coach, I'm pretty sure that Mark Love and Todd Thornton both have done videos. Uh, Mark is one of my favorite videographers. I like to watch his videos because I learn things from him. So if you want to see the outside of the coach, tune into one of his videos. Uh, he does a great job. Um, locking and unlocking your compartments underneath though, super, super clutch. Now you have a remote that does this. You can do it on the keypad outside, but every time we would leave for the day, so keep in mind, we are in uh, San Diego. We were camping uh, in San Alejo and then at the Mission Bay Beach Resort. Um, San Alejo had like a warning where the people were stealing generators. So you really wanted to make sure you had your coach locked up. All you do when you're leaving is push and hold the one button on that exterior door lock. All your doors are locked easy to go. Okay, you show up, it's time to pull the cooler back out, get out the lawn chairs, push that same number code, push the two, hold it in, and unlock all of your bay doors without having to come into the coach with your sandy feet, and you can get your everything kind of ready to rock and roll without having to come back inside. So really, really love that keypad on the exterior of the coach, and I really love this lock and unlock feature where you can leave without having to go through and hand key all of those locks underneath. Uh, we have the block heater on right now. As you can imagine, that's really important to be able to start this coach. So we've got the block heater running. Um, the step cover. Honestly, I'll tell you, I don't think we ever used our step cover, but we didn't have our puppies with us and we didn't have any little kids with us. So that this is open most of the time, but this is a really nice step cover. If you do have littles or if you have puppies with you when you're going down the road and you want to give them an extra little spot where you can put their doggy bed and they can be comfortable and sleep, that would work great. Um, battery disconnect is up here in this bay on the Renegade. It's down below. The funny thing is, is in the Superstar, the battery disconnect uh, for the house is up here, which is a little less convenient because you've got to go into the coach to turn it on. I like it down by the door. But if you want to use your, um, your house or your chassis batteries, you know, to start your generator or start your chassis because maybe your battery for your actual RV is low, um, the, the chassis battery, the house override in the Renegade is over here by the door, so you actually have to have two people or tape. Grant Russell says to use tape. But I think it's kind of funny because it's on the dash up front in the Numar, which is a better place. And then I think this is a better place down low. Like I said, if I could just take them all and swish them around. Okay, so I think we've covered... Oh, no, we didn't. We didn't do... Up top, salt, pepper, olive oil, vinegar, and my little holder right here. Also my decorative rose that I put out on my tray. All of the guts for your microwave are in here. Um, but I keep my coffee maker up here, keep the French press, the grinder, all those things. Um, we, like I said, did do a lot of dishes. So technique, of course, is soap on this side, rinse on this side. If you put a rinse bucket in and you dump it, you can save some gray water capacity. But dual sinks is super handy. Having the little spray things just makes it easier to clean up after you're done. Um, so we like that. 
put that back in place. Plenty of room for the kitchen countertop for prep and uh, preparing things. Um, I love these recliners because they have the USB port in here. They're also really, really nice. Uh, Newmar did a great job this year with their materials on the interior. 2023, we had uh, a, a nice gray, but I really like the texture of this. I like the chairs for this. Um, they've done a really good job. So even though Colfax is no longer, I think you still have a really good looking, uh, a really, really good looking furniture with this. Of course, um, we use our Ottomans. Oh, I'm leaning against the Hoodie widget. Um, to store our blankets, but if you want to store blankets down here, uh, this is a great place to keep all of the remotes for the coach. And then you've got your drink holders. And then, of course, as I mentioned earlier, we have the table that converts um, into another bed here. So this is a 60-inch wide bed in our coach. This is the extended dinette. Like I mentioned earlier, it gets 22 inches longer with both inserts when you pull this out right and then this table leg here is magnetic so you just pop this down it matches all the furniture it's really nicely made gives you a little extra support and in this iteration you could very easily fit at least five people around this coach uh, around this table if not six um, but what we found in eating dinner by ourselves was that we used the ottoman here quite frequently so Jason would be here, I would be here, and then CJ was here. So we ate as a family of three in this configuration quite readily. Um, I've got, Doug is taking delivery of uh, this coach. I think they're picking it up on Saturday now. Um, and he ordered an extra chair. I promised him some measurements. So at the width here, we're at 17 and a half inches from bar to bar. At our interior width here, we're at 15 and a half inches uh, from the ground to the chair itself. The top of the chair is just about 19 and a half to 20 inches off of the ground, fully extended. And then the overall length, I'm gonna say is about 16 and a half inches deep. Um, and the reason I'm measuring this for Doug is because he's got some back issues and this is the chair he'll probably sit on uh, at, the, at this RV table. If you order a coach like we did and you wanna have one of these chairs, uh, they're not expensive. Uh, I would be more than happy to order an extra one for you if you have the Ottomans in the couch. Um, okay, so overhead bin storage, super clutch, gotta have it. Um, Jason uses this, I don't think it's necessary. I like our heat shields, he does both. Um, there's a ton of room in here. One of the big advantages to this RV is that they've taken out the dividing walls in these cabinets overhead uh, in 2024. So you have a lot more flexibility in how you're using this overhead space. Uh, but we have big containers that we slide in and out and keep all sorts of supplies up here. Um, and then we keep all of our board games, um, Cards Against Humanity. We played a lot of Connect Four. I guess we're not very smart. Um, Trivial Pursuit, all that stuff you put over here. And then we use the heck out of the sound bar overhead. Again, pre-wired for HDMI if you have any kind of, um, you know, if you've got any kind of contraptions you want to put in, whether it be a PlayStation. And the reason I'm opening these for you is because I wanted to show you, you do have wiring running behind these cabinet doors. They're camouflaging what's going on behind the scenes. So it looks classy, but there is some usage of space there. And then let's go ahead and put this TV up. Uh, like I said, we didn't watch a lot of television, uh, which is probably weird to most people, but whatever. That's just how we are. Um, I wanted to show today, everyone always asks me, okay, so can you um, rotate these seats and what do they look like? So yes, you can rotate these seats. This is what it looks like to be sitting with them. Both of them turn around. They are not recliners, um, but they're, they're perfectly fine. They're comfortable for sitting. They've got the adjustable armrest. So you can get them out of the way. If you've got puppies or something that are using them or you can leave them in place. Um, the other thing I wanted to cover today uh, so first of all, we've got our beautiful skylight up here. I've got the shade partially down. Um, so just so it would be a little bit faster to show you how dark you can make it. Uh, again, you can really black out this coach where it would be comfortable for everybody to sleep in until, you know, one o'clock in the afternoon if you had teenagers. Uh, so that's pretty cool. It's on a very easy to use slide. You don't have to have the coach on to be able to operate the shade, which is, which is handy because of course, if you're camping and you park, you don't necessarily want to start your RV. The generator was really quiet. It's an eight kilowatt quiet diesel generator by Owen, Owen and Cummins. 
Uh, that Cummins generator, again, was really quiet. The thing that was louder was starting up the coach itself. So um, on the note of the coach, M2 106 plus chassis. Uh, this is what I put in the fuel. Um, one full bottle of this is great for uh, keeping your diesel from gelling. This has to be put in in advance of it freezing. There's another type that you would use if you waited too long and it's too late. So this goes in in advance. Um, this is good for up to, uh, I think, 100 gallons. So I put half of it in one of the saddle tanks, the other half in the other half saddle tank. So 50% in each tank. Uh, because it treats up to 100 gallons, and of course, this is a 100-gallon fuel capacity. Um, all of that being said, though, let's talk about this. So now we have our new M2106 chassis. Some things that I showed uh, a 40 ERB yesterday on the P4 Cascadia chassis. This M2106 has a lot of advantages that that Cascadia had as well. Uh, one of the things that they've done here is they've moved your stock control. So you've got uh, drive, neutral, and reverse all on the stock, as well as uh, eco and then manual shift is on, on the stock. And then your engine brake is also on the stock. So you've got off, on, and then so you've got your three settings. So that's a nice feature. Um, so that's great. The other thing that we've gone to in the, the 2024 iteration are the steering wheel controls. Honestly, like we just don't use this stuff a lot while we're driving. Um, if we're on the phone, we do definitely have a Bluetooth in. Uh, keep in mind, you need a Bluetooth in not only your coach, but also your radio. They're separate Bluetooth. And if you Bluetooth in your uh, navigation system, you actually will have traffic and weather uh, for free for the first three years of your navigation uh, lifetime. So this has to be activated uh, after you've logged into your Wi-Fi. We have Cradle Point. Um, we do Starlink here for a lot of people. You can just use the Everest system um, that comes with a coach. So there's a lot of different ways to have Wi-Fi, but you've got to get that activated before you can go ahead and log into this system. And then after you've got that activated and you log into the system, you will have traffic interruptions on this navigation system so you don't need to use both Google and your RV nav. Um, we still look at the routes. So going into San Alejo is pretty dicey. Of course, you're going down into the Solano Beach area. It's a lot of traffic, lots of fancy cars. You're in a 40 foot super C with a really bad turning radius trying to get through town. So you want to make sure you kind of know what you're doing. So I do look at Google Maps in advance before I go places. But the RV navigation was really, really tried and true for us. Uh, throughout this trip. So, so far, so good. And even um, right now, the RV is in Arizona. Uh, it took Jason down a completely different back way into Arizona than he was used to going. And he said it's actually probably the best route he's taken. So um, I think a lot of these RV nav systems have gotten substantially better in the last two or three years. And so I would encourage you use yours, but make sure you turn the system on. I think that that's really important. Oh, we've got a question. The question is how much room is there Oh, great, great question. So somebody's asking how much room there is to walk when the slides are pulled in. And it's really funny because I did not do that yesterday and I meant to. And by the time we got finished, I was like, oh shoot, I forgot. But I will make sure I pull the slides in and we'll show you walking room. Um, it's not a lot of room. It depends on how fat your dog is. If you don't have a fat dog, you can get back and forth to the bathroom pretty easily. If you've got hip issues or any kind of like knee issues or whatever, it is kind of a sideways shuffle and I'll show that to you in a little bit. Um, but there's plenty of room to get to the bathroom. You can open the refrigerator. You can open uh, all the pantry openings. Uh, you can use a microwave, all of those things while you're going down the road. So there's plenty of room for that. Uh, but the Numar product does have a little bit deeper furniture. Um, if you're looking for something that has great walking space, tune into the video that I made yesterday on the Explorer or pull up one of my, um, the equivalent coach to this M2 106 plus chassis like to like from Renegade to Numar, which are the two manufacturers I would absolutely encourage you to shop with. I'm gonna do a Dynamax video tomorrow, um, not to show you why you wouldn't buy it, but to show you what some of the differences are between the product quality between uh, both Renegade and Numar versus Dynamax. Um, but if you're looking for a product that has really good walking space and you do have any of those mobility issues, take a look at a uh, Renegade uh, Verona LE. So it's important to get to that LE level where you get into that 450 Aqua Hot D. So you've got a comparable um, Oasis, or I'm sorry, comparable hydronic system. Uh, but that would be another coach that has really good walking room. 
Um, okay, so back to that. And so both of those coaches, by the way, will have this new iteration of steering wheel controls. Um, you'll also have a little bit larger digital display here in the center. As you can still, we still have these analog dash gauges. Um, keep in mind, this is a truck. This is built to be a semi-truck. It is not built to be a luxury RV. If you want to get a luxury RV, get a Dutch Star, get a Ventana. They have those big all-glass dashes. Uh, one thing I was a little disappointed about was that we have, as you can see here, only one screen here. This navigation uh, system has an overhead camera, as you can see. So I'm on 360 view right now. It, this saved us. We almost hit a water line right here. And I told Jason, turn on the camera. He looked, he was so close. We knew that we had to stop. So I will say, I make fun of it a lot and say you really don't need it because if you're just using your mirrors to back up, but it was very handy to be able to see the front of the coach when we were backing into this parking spot so that we didn't hit this water line that we would probably had to re like replace if we had hit it. So overhead camera's nice. Um, as you can see, it's got a great rear view. It has a top down that'll show you when you're loading your hitch. But I would encourage you not just to only, you could put a Cobra up here, but I would also mount a, uh, a rear view camera system or a Voyager uh, camera system that is for cameras only so that you can keep this bad boy up here on your radio or your media or your, you know, uh, your Sirius XM um, or your auxiliary, whatever you're using, HDMI, it's got all these different inputs. I would have a, a dedicated camera added to this coach. Um, I just added one to a, a pre-owned uh, Renegade Verona LE that I sold um, last month, and I would be happy to install one for you too. Uh, we can change, you know, when we're adding them, we can kind of modify it to fit your usage. So if you've got something that needs a camera behind, for instance, your tow vehicle or whatever else, we can have multiple inputs put in for you. Um, Again, this can be for a Cobra. If you look at the window here, you can see that there is an antenna. If you would like to become one of those people who is, you know, breaker, breaker, space kitten, tuning in here to you, 1040. You can do that. Uh, it's right there. Also have your <coughs> air horn versus your, oh, I don't have the key on, your little dinky horn. Um, talk a little bit about dash components here. Uh, so... Doug added some really cool lights in the front. So if you want to do uh, an additional driving light and also fog lamp, uh, there's a kit that comes. It's got four switches total. So we were able to mount those here because we have so much space. Um, and I would be happy. I've got a video of that installation. Just shoot me a text or give me an email and I can show you the video of the aftermarket lighting package that we added to the front of the M2106 Plus chassis that I'm delivering this week. Um, but as you can see, all of your buttons that used to be spread out throughout the dash are just kind of consolidated to one uh, small corner here. Um, really not a lot of differentiation in terms of how it works, except for this. So your Detroit Assurance uh, is going to be the same thing. I don't know if anyone's familiar. We've had uh, the Wabco system on the Renegade uh, Verona and Verona LEs for a while. That same Wabco company is working in partnership with Daimler and they've come up with what's called Detroit Assurance. You have a uh, lane tracking package that's actually watching the lanes in front of you, telling you whether or not you're drifting. And then this coach also now has the capacity to um, monitor the distance in front of it. So you can set it to follow whatever vehicle it is that you're chasing as opposed to just having the regular cruise control. And that's gonna be standard in the M2106 chassis. Um, the other big difference is it's got a tire pressure monitoring system. That is fantastic for anybody who is using only a singular vehicle. If you are flat towing, it does not monitor the tire pressure of the vehicles behind you. I also have a really cool new solution for that. I would be happy to share that information with you as well. Um, of course, your tow vehicle getting a flat is way less evident to you while you're driving than if you're in the RV itself. So that's an important feature to have installed. The other thing I wanna make sure that you note is that there is no brake controller for a trailer standard on this coach. So if you are about to go on a road trip and you had a trailer you were trailering, you have a seven pin connector in the back, but it will not have a brake controller on it. So if you need to have a brake controller installed, please let me know. I have pre-set pricing for all of these things for the Superstar available to you in a very simple list. Uh, with all of the equipment that we use for them. I'd be happy to share that with you. Um, so we'll go ahead and take a look in these overhead compartments here. This is again, super crucial storage. Everybody gets one of these when we're on a road trip with us. 
Uh, if you have any issues, one of the reasons that you would buy a, a superstar is because you could reach out to Darian Todd and she could answer questions to you. Another reason is going to be because JBL has uh, stepped it up even better this year. We have a more advanced sound system in this coach than we have had in previous years starting in 2024. Um, but these cubbies are just super great. Everybody gets a cubby. Everybody has to put their stuff in here. If I find AirPods, if I find charging cables, if I find sunglasses or anything that I think I belong that belongs to you, it goes into your cubby. We also keep our books on flowers and birds and maps and anything else that we want to have in these as well. There's your additional speaker for your JBL. It used to be down here in the uh, subfloor. Now it's up above. Um, but super cool feature there. Another reason you would purchase your coach from Trans West Truck Trailer RV is because of Bill Habercorn. Bill is on the road right now. Um, he is going to go out and, and help with a delivery in person. Um, not something we do all the time, but if you call Bill and you have a question, he is the king of RVs. He knows this thing um, as well as I do for sure. Uh, can answer any questions that you have from a technical standpoint on every single RV that we carry. He's just amazing. Uh, if you purchase through TransWest Truck Trailer RV here in Frederick, Colorado, he comes along with that purchase and he's got a cell phone. His whole job throughout the years to do nothing but answer your questions. So as much as you can get a hold of Darian, if she's having a three-day weekend and it's a holiday and you need to get some help, you can call me. If we can't get a hold of the answer quickly enough, you can also call Bill. You can reach out to both of us. But we have a great support network for the people that we have out RVing. And I can't tell you, I've been doing this for a number of years, but I have so many repeat customers and so many referrals because of the fact that we do house service here as well as chassis. And then we have this really vast support system for our clients so that as they're camping, they get the help that they need. Uh, now, not, bef not last, not last, but last, <clears throat> Last but not least, this compartment up here is huge. I keep my toaster oven up here. I keep a, a plastic bin that holds all of our bagels, all of our hamburger buns, our hot dog buns, all of our bread products go in the bin up here. The reason that is, is I have had mice. I have a barn um, and I'll tell you, they can smell food. So keeping everything in those containers, as I mentioned earlier, not in cereal boxes, keeping your bread in a bin, will definitely keep the rodents from smelling those delicious goods. You know, like there's nothing that smells better than a freshly cooked loaf of bread. And those little mices, they know it and they will try to get into your RV. Keep it up here, plenty of room. Uh, but the 17 point, or 19.7 cubic foot refrigerator is fantastic. Um, super useful, held everything that we needed. It was amazing, I absolutely love it. Um, we do keep a cooler full of all of our drinks. We don't keep them in the refrigerator. We keep it cooler outside and we fill it with ice. Um, this ice maker is fantastic. It makes tons of ice cubes. Um, we had our first two rounds were pink. So if you are going to dewinterize your own coach, just keep in mind, it takes quite a while for the ice to freeze. Um, so it will typically come if you dewinterize it for you here at uh, TransWest for delivery with pink ice cubes. Just dump them out. Uh, it's not a, uh, it's not toxic. So if you had a pink ice cube, um, as my son did in his water bottle because he wasn't paying attention. No, he did. He did it out of here. He got pink water, and he was do doing it into a, um, you know, one of those uh, I don't know containers. So he didn't see the color of it. And he drank it, and apparently it's really bitter and disgusting because he spit it out in the sink. It was like, oh my god, what is that? Like all dramatic, like, hey CJ. Um, but anyway, it was the pink stuff. Um, just flush it out. The way that you flush it out is of course, run the water dispenser and then turn on the ice dispenser and then just dump the stuff as it comes through. And then when it's clean, it's free to drink. Um, anyway, great, uh, great feature there with that, uh, with that aspect of the coach. Um, let's go ahead and pull these slides in since we didn't do that yesterday. We're going to remember that for our viewer and on the note of, for our viewer, um, Thank you so much for tuning in. Thanks for uh, asking questions during my videos. Um, please put comments down, uh, like, subscribe. Yesterday I did a uh, measurement video on a 40 ERB because it's just really hard to catch those coaches. Um, you know, I took recommendations from one of our viewers that said, hey, can you write those down so that we can go back and reference them? I mean, I do respond to my comments. 
Um, and I do learn from you. And like I said, I want to be better in 2024 than I was in 23. And we had a fantastic year. But whatever you can do to help me grow, I so appreciate it. Uh, here's that walking room. So, I mean, I guess I could really, like, keep it forward. But it would just be easier to turn sideways. Uh, plenty of room. You're not going to watch your TV while you're driving down the road. You're going to have to keep that down because they don't like it for the motor. Um, but you can watch your iPad. And you could watch TV in the bedroom if you wanted to. Uh, but you have plenty of room to sit down really comfortably. There's a seatbelt there. There's a seatbelt here. There's a seatbelt here. So this coach has a total of five seatbelts. Um, not a total of six. So if you are sleeping six in this coach and you're using both of those bunks, you might want to get the couch that has the three seatbelts instead. Um, but, you know, I hope that this helps, you know, to, to see that this is really easy access. Um, again, great place for a puppy here. And then uh, access to the bedroom. Uh, we have a removable ladder. If you don't remove the ladder, uh, this guy here, as you can imagine, the extra four inches is nice to have. So you can just take that off while you're in transit. And it makes it really easy to get into this bathroom area. Um, so as I promised, this is a special order exterior color. Uh, what we did is we took two, um, so you can custom order the colors for your coach. It's really not expensive. Um, but a lot of people feel like they like some movement in the graphics. And I have like an all white coach called Blanco, for instance. If you don't want a Blanco coach, but you'd like to have a little less movement, we took two of the colors and made them the same. So we got, we not only had a white skin, but we also did A in white. And what that did is it omitted uh, a color, if you will. So instead of having four total colors, it only has three. And I think it turned out really well. We're going to go outside for like a microsecond, you guys. Just so you know, this is not an outside video today. Um, on the way out, I want you to take a look again at this doorbell and this key unit. Again, you can lock and unlock your doors from this. This glows. It is really handy at night to know where your steps are. And then these steps are so cool. They go all the way down. They articulate. But this is our exterior color. Um, as you can see, much less busy than we have a majority of our coaches have a little more movement to them i love the way that this has come out um if you are in the market for a coach and you want to do a custom color you can always uh oh i've got a question before i sign off should we sell the canada yeah call me be happy to get you i can even build it with can canadian specs for you so we the question is do we build for canada and ab absolutely we'd be happy to have you in fact i've got a canadian client right now um buying a renegade verona so uh, yes, absolutely. Be happy to sell to Canada. We can deliver anywhere in the continental United States. Alaska will cost you a little extra because I'll probably have to drive it there. But uh, <laughs> all of that being said, uh, my name is Katie O'Neill. I'm coming to you. This is my second video of the new year. Thank you for joining me. Uh, you can find me at 303-562-8659. Hashtag RVs inside out. Let me know how I can get you out on the road and camping. And thank you so much for tuning in.